Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome to the Banished Vault, which I think is the name of this giant monastery slash spaceship that we are using to travel through sort of a dead cosmos. Like, listen, <laughs> if this thing is going to grab you, it's going to grab you on an aesthetic level. I don't even actually know what the mechanics are, um, but I am fascinated by the basic pitch here, and I'm just so eager to see what it is. Aren't you? Won't you come with me into this journey, into the first the first save slot? Uh, tutorial scenarios, we should probably enable those. Here's the seed, I guess, in case you want to play along at home. And let's get started. The stars have been inhabited for the greater part of a millennium. Through wars, plague, and expansion, the inter interstellar churches have endured. For generations, the churches strengthen their control over stasis, a hybrid matrix that sustains life for the long hibernation of interstellar travel. They send vaults, vast monastery cities built for tens of thousands, to explore and colonize new worlds. On the fringes of territorial space, a colony mission conducted by the Origa Vault discovers a phenomenon they christen the Gloom. It summarily annihilates the settlers, leaving behind only a meager crew of exiles. The exiles flee to new solar systems. Relentlessly pursued by the gloom, they gather resources from planets to create more stasis, before being compelled to return to hibernation. They resolve to undertake a new task, to write a chronicle of their journey, and transmit it home. Listen, if there was ever anybody who was qualified to fly the Oregon Vault through space, I think it's me. A structure was seen on the horizon. Every one of our party described its shape differently, but all could see its form clearly. Welcome to the Banished Vault. This is the first of two scenarios designed to introduce us to the game. Okay, the game manual contains step-by-step -step instructions to complete them. I will uh, maybe just muddle through. There, oh, there's a game manual button. Okay. Uh, the scenario introduces the interface map and moving ships to and from planets. Cool. Let's do it. So, ship maneuvers. Oh, I love this. The style of this is so cool. The first scenario teaches you how to move ships around a solar system and enter hibernation. The moth fills the sky, dimming the sky to a pale fog. Days later, we notice the arc bending towards the sun. The first section of the scenario is to collect supplies from a stranded ship, then collect some stasis already present at a planet. Finally, return your exile and stasis to the vault and begin hibernation. So, we assign an exile to be navigator. We must have an engine, and we must have fuel to generate an en uh, energy. This all makes sense. So select the ship figurine on the map to open the display. And also there's another... Okay, so this is the stranded ship we're trying to rendezvous with. Like, look at the presentation of this. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have Aldo here in the navigator position. Aldo with five faith and four actions and no special ability. Uh, select the map location underneath the stranded ship, which will set the destination for our maneuver, showing the energy needed. Eleven. Uh, right now, we have zero, so that seems like a problem. On the ship display, take the engine from the cargo and place it right. There's no engine in the thi Okay. Yeah. An Oncilla engine with two thrust and 175 efficiency, which is probably a good amount. Uh, then we select the right arrow button below the engine to increase the fuel used for this maneuver. We have eight units of fuel. We just need 11 energy. The more fuel you use, the more energy is generated. You must meet or exceed the needs for the maneuver you set. And then start the maneuver. Okay. Uh, before the ship reaches its destination, it stops midway. These turn stops add time to a maneuver. The ship resumes its maneuver at the start of the next turn. Okay. So this is gonna this is going to be more than a single turn move. 
Wait, did I do that correctly? No, no maneuver set. Set this maneuver. Okay, don't right click, right click closes menus. Okay, that's as far as we can go in a single turn. And you can see it was clearly marked. All right. Uh, so this is the stranded ship. Look at all of the fuel and also a higher thrust but lower efficiency engine. Interesting. How do I... Is there a button to just grab everything at once? Uh, at this point in this scenario, your main ship needs more fuel and a better engine to land on the nearby planet. You get those items from the stra stranded ship. To stand in a stellar oculus is to know the embrace of starlight. Um, obviously, everybody knows that. Okay, so we can... Yeah, we can see the other ship. Select the engine, then select the main ship's panel. Oh, okay, I see how they want us to do it. So we go, like, here... And then this becomes a drop point for the items. Okay. It's interesting that there's not just a grab all button. I wonder why. So, to land on this, we need two thrust. Well, we have two thrust. E2, T2, right? Why does this not allow me... Like, if I want to do this... Insufficient energy, obviously. Let's, hold on, let's not just feel our way through. <laughs> let's look at the manual. All right, so we transferred all the cargo. With the main ship, select the surface location. Note how the path between the orbit and surface is a thrust requirement. Uh, change engines to the more powerful engine you just acquired, which satisfies the thrust requirement needed to land on the planet. I think the one we already have installed also does, but this is, I mean, this is more thrust. That's probably better. See, this one says it has two thrusts and 175 efficiency, but when we equip it here, it does say zero. Hmm. All right, we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, complete the maneuver. Allocate some fuel, travel to the planet's surface. It's going to not take all that much uh, energy to do this, so just a little bit of fuel is probably sufficient, and let's go. Oh, we just want to end turn. The ship has arrived at the planet, and you are now able to view the surface. You'll retrieve the stasis here and return to the vault to begin hibernation. Select the figurine on the map to enter surface view of the planet. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh. Okay. Interesting. What do I make of this? <clears throat> the display on the right shows the details of this location. Take the stasis here and place it on your ship. Uh, wait. I have... Did I not set the maneuver correctly? Because it seems like we should be... We are floating above the thing. Enter surface view. Select the figuring on the map next to the location to enter surface view. The display on the right shows the details of the location. I was absolutely looking at the display on the left. Never mind me. Yeah, here we go. A carefully made compound to sustain exile hibernation. So we want this. Ah, there, okay, there's a quick swap button. See controls. Shift, okay, if I shift click on something, it just jumps it from one side to the other. That's useful. Uh, select return to map. Notes the vault now appeared on the, uh, the vault has now appeared on the location you started the scenario. Has it? Oh, indeed. Yeah, the <laughs> thing is mighty. Uh, the exiles run out of actions for the turn and turn to restore your actions and then plot a maneuver back home Then select the vault figurine to open the vault display transfer all your cargo into the vault and place the exile in the vault's crew area and then just begin hibernation so this is like the the very the very most basics of sending out crew and getting stuff 
All right, so this is our intended position. We're going to need 10 energy to make it through what we're doing this turn. But, I mean, we may as well put in enough fuel for the entire maneuver, right? Okay, so transfer everything. Uh, send you back to the crew and begin hibernation. Again, once more into the dim starlight, our chase has endured for such a time that void is more comfortable than gravity. Our faith wavers. All right, all of your exiles lose one faith when hibernating. You have enough stasis to hibernate everybody and everybody made it home. Fantastic. We did it, everybody. We beat a tutorial. The second scenario involves constructing outposts on planets and operating buildings to produce resources. Uh, vaults were never intended to be self-sufficient. However, the urge to claim ever-distant stars was not overcome. All right, so, scenario two. Use the water harvester to gather water and the other existing buildings to create stasis and fuel. So, we have a planet here that I assume we need to get to. Yeah. Sorry, select the ship. Do this. Hey, Aldo. Buddy. Gonna need you. Definitely gonna need some fuel. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, and we are definitely going to need to leave some cargo space, I'm sure. So that is a 19 energy maneuver. That's expensive. All right, well, we have enough fuel to get back at least. All right, so now that we're here, there are some buildings on the planet's surface already. We have a fuel producer and a stasis producer. Select the water harvester to open its display. The water harvester. So there's some water there. This is our location cache. Huh, the water harvester. So when we click buildings, it shows a water harvester, but I don't actually see one here. It's like the operate button to produce water. Each building operation requires an action spent by the exile in the... Okay, so you have to assign people to buildings to work the buildings. Well, thankfully we have Aldo here. This costs two resource? What is that resource? Iron. Okay. And it will eat one of Aldo's actions. Aldo's only action. Creating stasis will need water, titanium, and CO2. So we gotta get this water, cause... Hmm. But the water harvester, do I have to assign the iron to it? No inputs necessary. There should just be an operate button. Oh wait, this is the, abil the ability to build a water harvester? I see, okay. Labor has no actions because I had to build a water harvester before I could actually... There we go. But now we can operate it. Did I miss a thing in the manual? Yeah, I totally did. I was like... It opened to the wrong page. <laughs> okay, I see. Well, that's fine. We figured it out. Okay, so we got our water harvester. Uh... 
Aldo still has some actions left this turn. Now we gotta produce stasis. So the stasis producer, we now have all of the resources necessary. Let's operate it, because we're gonna need at least one stasis for Aldo to sleep. Okay, operate it like you did the water harvester and it uses the resources present to create stasis. Operate it again to create a second unit because it takes two units for an exile to hibernate. Then we gotta make some fuel. Harvest more water as necessary and the turn to restore the uh, exile's actions. What does it take to make fuel? Okay, fuel is just one water produces three fuel. Well, we can go ahead and operate that. I, we have enough fuel for the return journey. I, I brought enough to get back to the ship. It just takes water to do this, huh? Let's, um... And we have no reason not to make a little bit more, right? Definitely want to take the stasis with us. And then these things, we... Can we bring these on the ship? We can. For the moment, I guess there's no reason not to. All those out of actions for the moment. And then we'll just, um... I mean, I guess, hold on. I guess there's no reason. Let's let's turn the rest of that into water and the, uh, the rest of that into fuel and then uh, back up to the map and just get out of here, right? Return to the vault. Yep. Okay. I get the basics here. 19 energy. Now that we're here, we just put everything back on board. We got enough fuel to get down to another planet's surface, in theory, and enough stasis to hibernate. And so, we hibernate. Again, once more into the dim starlight. Our chase has endured for such a time that vo you, uh, This is the same text. Let's go ahead and leave the system. Okay, so those are the tutorials. We kind of get the basic idea. Now begins your journey to write your chronicle and escape the gloom. Once your chronicle is written, your journey is complete. Uh, unlike the previous scenarios, this solar system has nothing prepared in advance. You must decide which planets to visit and how to create stasis. To aid you, the manual has a general guide to completing this system. Okay, so like really simple game concepts. And yeah, it is just a whole, a whole manual, a whole like old school style manual with setting like the uh, flavor illustrations and stuff i like this very much all right general guide to escaping a solar system escape before the gloom arrives create enough stasis to put your exiles into hibernation turns and stasis are always shown at the top of the game screen okay so 30 turns until the gloom catches us i guess if you make a mistake restart the solar system using the button in the top left uh, to create stasis, you need water, CO2, and titanium, so look for these things. Also take note of iron, which you will need for building construction. Plan maneuvers. Remember to bring fuel for the return trip or for a smaller ship to bring resources to another location. Load the items you need to construct buildings from the vault onto the ships. Constructing a stasis producer will require alloy, iron, and titanium, so we got to be on the lookout for ways to gain or create alloy as well. Most harvester buildings are constructed with iron. Producers and other things will require combinations. Uh, and of course, you got your exiles. To better plan your outposts, place multiple buildings before constructing them. Once constructed, buildings cannot be removed. Okay, need two stasis for each exile, which we get. All resources must be at the same location as the stasis producer to create the stasis, which may involve moving stuff around. Harvest and create spare resources for the next system. Iron and fuel are crucial, while water and titanium are merely useful. Okay. We have entered infinity. A chronicle is the only thing remaining to us with a destination. This terminus is our star in the distance, which would not grow closer until we set our minds to reaching its orbit. Our lives may continue after we complete the Chronicle, but it is something started and will be ended. To complete a journey of the game, you must complete four entries in the Chronicle of the Auriga Vault. 
Inscribing an entry into the Chronicle requires visiting a hallowed planet and constructing a scriptorium there. Each hallowed planet allows one scriptorium and construction writes the entry. Okay, look out for hallowed planets. Upon completing a journey, the game unlocks journey configurations for modifying the starting... Yeah, you, you earn access to the real options by proving you can get through the basic thing once. Okay. I think we are, um, I think we're ready to go for this. I'm a little bit worried about our faith. We haven't really talked about faith as a resource yet. And is this stuff more or less... Uh, yeah, this stuff doesn't seem all that necessary. Ah, faith is an important aspect. If an exile's faith reaches zero, they cannot take actions. Faith dictates how many dice are rolled when you resolve a hazard. The more dice rolled, the better, obviously. Uh, over time, an exile's faith diminishes. When they enter hibernation, they lose some. The faith is restored in the chapel at the Ariga Vault. Place the exile in the chapel slot and a number of elixir equal to the exile's current faith plus one. Okay, so we're going to be on the lookout for Elixir as well. The Gloom pursues you constantly. Yeah, okay, 30 turns. Once the remaining turns reach zero, the Gloom begins destroying the solar system. Each turn after zero, the planet or region closest to the sun is destroyed. Okay, so zero is not like the system is consumed. At zero, that's when things start getting bad and you still have time to run afterward. Okay, we can, yeah, we can work with this. Uh, there's a lot of text in here, but I think we get the basic idea. Let's, um, let's, let's try it. Let's, let's head, let's head out. So, what have we? In the vault, we have some alloy. We have six elixir. Somnia is looking maybe not the most faithful at the moment. Perhaps a thing to uh, to correct immediately. A traveler's right is a complex process that can take weeks. But like, obviously you're you're playing a push your luck game with it, right? Like you want to let you want to let your faith get as low as possible before refreshing it because it's cheaper to refresh it from low values. Oh, I love this presentation of the planets and the resources. So we need water and titanium. And already forgetting water and titanium and something to produce the stasis. CO2, CO2, okay. TCW. So we do have all of those things on this planet, and this planet's hallowed. So we definitely want to go here. It's going to be 2, 7, 15, 20. Jeez. Okay, sorry. Um, 23, 34 energy to get down. What kinds of ships do I have access to right now? Uh, the Nexus 83. The Sedili Triad. Oops, right clicking. <clears throat> the Sedili Triad. And the Air Cater. So this, these things have thrust modifiers. The ship's effect on thrust with which the engine must counteract. Okay, this is why we were seeing different thrust values than we were expecting last time more massive ships right that makes a lot of sense you're paying you're paying a cost for um for carrying capacity all right well let's send celesta wait how do i yeah i would like to here we go. I have to click on you in this menu. And we send the people who have the most uh, the most uh, actions, right? And then we could potentially send Somnia out 
on their own to gather other stuff. What is Amagan? Methane. Hmm. And for the moment, we know not the value. Just exploration is a good idea, right? And also, also bringing home more iron. All right, let's let's plot movement for this ship. So I want to make it all the way to here. Right, shoot, sorry. I, it is it's gonna take me a second to remember to stop right clicking on things. Uh, well, one thing is we're gonna need for sure a bunch of fuel, like a ton of fuel. Okay, so... What does it take to generate 2.5 fuel per energy? But with a decreasing... Yeah, every time you put more fuel in, you're getting decreasing effectiveness. Criminy. We have to generate... In order to go to this planet, we would have to generate an incredible amount of fuel on the planet's surface. Maybe we don't want to do this. Um, we can get... Clear. We can get a... Between this planet and its moons, we can put together the resources we need. Also, there is S here. Maybe this is a better... That was a better move. What is that? Because this, this is a moon, right? Of this planet? But what is that? Hey, game manual. Help me. I am looking for this symbol. Uh... Well, it is an action symbol, I suppose. Oh, there's a, there's an action symbol next to it. Three actions to do something, to gather some resource. Hazards are depicted like this. Ships can stop at these locations, rendezvous with other ships. Huh. Well, let's find out. So I'm going to have the air cater plan a move to here. Dropping back to 23 energy is definitely going to help. So that's only 26 fuel. That's three stacks of fuel. So if we just bring three more stacks of fuel with us, we'd be guaranteed to get make it back home. And we can't make fuel here. It's critically important to note. <laughs> Uh, this is really ugly. 7, 11, 13 to get to there. So, like, if I wanted to then send out one of the smaller ships. And we could send water with them so that they can make some fuel on the surface. They can extract their own iron. Um, but yeah, if we, if we wanted to send... Somnia out here to gather water, which is critically important. Uh, 15 energy is a lot easier. We can do that inside of a single uh, inside of a single stack of fuel. And there's water on the surface of this planet, so we can make more fuel here. But then technically we don't need to generate fuel over here and I would like to not generate fuel over here ideally because obviously like you know they're gonna have other things to do with their time and then somebody I can just drop them some fuel and then head back yeah let's try that but hold on what if I want to stop here first let's stop off here because I'm curious 
what that what that portends. All right, let's see if this works. Let's see if this is a real plan. So I'm going to send them out first. Can I have both the ships doing things at the same time? I should be able to, right? Yeah, and then you have your maneuver to here, which we do need five fuel for, so you start that. Okay, and I didn't bring... Oh, shoot. I needed to load... Uh, is there an undo? I can restart. That feels a little strong. But yeah, let's let's restart because I need to I needed to load that ship with um what do you call it? I need to load that ship with iron because Nexus eighty three is not going to be able to produce its own um buildings without that. Sorry, we're just you know I'm still learning here. We're we're, we're we'll get it. All right, begin your maneuver. This one, click, click, click. Uh, give me back this, load that, take the rest of the fuel, and make this move. And then I don't want them being responsible for building any, for making any fuel. So we don't want to send any water with them. They can gather their own iron on the surface, so we don't need to deplete supplies necessarily. And they have titanium and CO2 on the planet's surface, in theory. I suppose we could have them stop short, though, huh? They gather some extra CO2 on the way. Yeah, because there's less to be had here. Okay, let's do it like that. Well, as we're doing things right now, I guess maybe I want to maybe I want to send them some water for the stasis, like because as it is now, I'm relying on this ship collecting water, turning water into fuel, and then also collecting more water and bringing water and fuel over to here in order to um, in order to build the stasis we need. But maybe that's not actually a good way to do things. This ship certainly um, certainly has a pretty full cargo hold already. I guess let's be on the safest side. Okay, so begin that maneuver. You know where you're going. Okay, now I feel much more comfortable. Let's end the turn. All right, both the ships are moving at the same speed because they're driving the same engine. Oh, okay, this is not, like, an event. This is a place where we can create a harvester. Uh, all right, hold on. So that's true of the other one as well? Return to map. Yeah, well, it's not actually useful for these people because they can't build anything. Even if we had somebody assigned as builder. Uh, like you. Oh, these buildings cost titanium. Okay. Well, yeah, we definitely can't do that. So, uh, your turn is simple enough. I just set you to move. But the fact that we were able to stop here makes our travel way more efficient. Um, it means that I brought way too much fuel. <laughs> That's fine. So what we need most of all is to start gathering the iron, start gathering the titanium, right? Uh, you have no actions left. So the iron harvester harvests iron. At depth one, interesting. You know, it didn't occur to me. I just, like, didn't give them any iron because I was like, they'll build their own stuff. 
It didn't occur to me that you would use iron to build the iron thing, so it's a good thing that the location cache had three iron at it. I mean, that's exactly why they do that, right? It's to give you the ability to, uh... To give you the ability to make up your mistakes. Okay, laborer has no actions, no inputs necessary. We won't be able to get anybody else working until next turn. So, back up to here. We can set up a CO2 harvester, but it costs titanium. Is there titanium at the moon I was sending you to? There isn't. All right, well, just finish your move then. Oops, I had to, sorry, I gotta pop you back over to navigation. Important that we don't leave you on the planet at this point. Okay. So now we understand how those work a little bit better. Uh, what I need mostly here is a water harvester. Let's bring this to the site cache. Okay. So we will we will do that once we have actions for construction. Build this thing. Operate. Now I'm also gonna need a fuel producer here. Fuel is produced from water, but also we need titanium to build this thing. Titanium is way more important than I was led to believe. Um, we have titanium on this planet. Yeah. Okay. We're going to, this is going to be a real sloppy colony as I figure out how to do our resources. All right. So first things first, operate, operate, operate. All you do is, is produce iron. All right. So... gonna need a titanium harvester let me get you back you're going to I guess it doesn't really matter where it is probably construct this from our iron and I guess just gather more Iron? How much? Like, what else are we going to need to build? We're intending to build the stasis producer here, which requires an alloy. An alloy producer, which requires all of this stuff. So let's go ahead and produce. Ah, okay. Some of these tiles are not available to be built on. What's wrong with these tiles? Can we tell? Nope, they're just not in the build thing. Uneven ground, whatever. Okay. So sorry, I have to build the alloy producer first. Let's do that. Construct. We could have saved a lot of trouble here, but it's important that we do this, I think, from the bottom at least once to get a sense of what it actually takes to start our resource production um, from nothing, right? So the alloy producer uses iron, titanium, and silica to produce a point of alloys. And we need all of those things. We need an alloy to produce the stasis producer. Okay. Well, we're gonna need iron, we're gonna need... Yeah, we need two iron at least. So that's how we can spend the rest of our actions here. Now you have access to silica, but can we build a silica harvester without titanium? We can. Okay. So we're going to need to do that. That'll be your last action for the turn. The fuel producer needs titanium and you don't have any. Do we have the fuel necessary to make it? No, we definitely don't. It's 16 energy to make it back to here. So the big ship's gonna have to come and, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna get complicated. 
All right, let's try to figure out what resources we think we need before we make any more moves. Um, cancel this construction. Sorry, didn't even mean to click that. So, with the stuff we have here, we're going to need... Ah, reveals all resources at depth one. Resources at depth one or more can be accessed after building a resource scanner. Okay, interesting. So that's a depth zero titanium. So there could be more stuff. We don't know. There is the uh, the value of that hallowed planet as a scriptorium, but I just don't. I just don't know. It seems very far away from the vault. So this would only be a single iron. We could just we could just try. We could just hope. I don't know if I want to build it there necessarily. I was trying to move the camera around, but. I'm actually kind of curious. So does it reveal anything or could we already see stuff? It doesn't reveal anything. Okay, but it would, it would have. All right. And we don't have better qualities of that to build yet. So that's interesting. Okay, so... We're going to need fuel production. Somewhere. May as well be here. Fuel is made directly out of water. We brought a bunch of water for this purpose, although it turns out that we are probably not going to uh, need to produce fuel. But this water is going to end up making stasis. And if we can get ourselves a functional stasis production, then we should produce as much as we can, right? All right. So we need silica. We need to we need to figure out exactly how we're going to get silica back from the other place. This is going to involve bringing some titanium across. Let's figure out exactly how much titanium we want over here. That's a depth one CO2. Interesting. So, we could certainly build here a resource ex excavator. That lets us access the CO2. Okay, cool, because we're going to need CO2. Many have drowned in it. That's an interesting way to to uh, to view that. Yeah, we're going to need CO2 for the thing, for the for the stasis. I'm assuming. So I can't actually see the, um, okay, no, I, I, I can see the construction cost. I can't see the resource cost of doing the thing just yet. All right, so somebody's got to take the ship back over, basically. We can only have one person assigned to the laborer role on the planet at a time, is that right? Because I don't want to bring two people on the ship. I want to leave two people on the world. But it looks like maybe I can't do that. Because there is much to do here. We're going to need silica as well. Maybe I do want to bring a bunch of people over here, actually. Yeah, maybe I do, because we're, we're actually going to need like, we're gonna need to do a lot of work. All right. So I'm going to have I'm going to have Celesta do one more thing on this planet. Uh, we're going to need we're going to need iron in the end for sure.
then we need to bring over some amount of titanium and some amount of fuel. The amount of titanium that is needed on this planet is... It's just to set up the, it's just to set up the fuel thing. So, we actually only need one. Okay, one titanium and then also, you know, a stack of fuel or whatever. Yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna leave a bunch of fuel behind. How do I, um, shoot, can I split a stack? Uh, menu. Right click, select one cargo, there we go. I only need one titanium. Did we need iron? I gotta be better about noting things. We have an iron. We're only planning to build one more building. We do not need to bring the iron. Okay. It matters. We're dealing with um, very small amounts of space, right? So it, it ends up mattering, I think. All right. I'm going to send you back there. We're going to leave Peregrine alone here to operate this stuff. And Brynath is going to pilot the ship. If this maneuver is going to take 13 fuel, we need to bring more fuel than this. Uh, I need to bring like four stacks of fuel with me. It's expensive to move around. The logistics costs here are really significant. Okay. So. Now that we've done this, we can drop off the titanium and we might, we're going to spend some time working here. Uh, so you're going to construct the fuel producer. Okay. And now that we have that, we are definitely going to produce some fuel. We also have to produce some silica. I mean, we have some silica. I want to go back to the to the vault, like, fully loaded with stuff, though, right? So I'm trying to figure out, like, what we want to do here, probably, is figure out exactly how much fuel it takes to get back. So we're going to have to move... The plan is to move both of these ships down to the planet's surface to retrieve Peregrine. Well, I guess not. No, only one of them needs to go back to the planet's surface to retrieve Peregrine, and that one can just be carrying enough fuel for the journey when it happens. So... Yeah, the air cater is going to go all the way back to the planet. Nexus 83 is just going to head back to the vault from here. So we need enough fuel to make that work. That is... I'm not even allowed to... All right, hold on. So that's six fuel for this ship. And the water, the, the bringing water to the other planet thing, like we can we can do that with the big ship now. So this actually, in, in a way, having had to move the big ship over here does simplify things for us somewhat. So in theory, you only need six fuel. And then this ship is going to need a bunch more than that. It's going to need to go 16 energy. I mean, we can make this in short bursts, right? I guess. 
Because we could go three energy and then ten energy. And that costs us nine fuel. Or we can make the maneuver all in one push, which ends up costing us 13 fuel. So having having a spot where you can stop off is actually really helpful. Because you can't... Okay, you can set maneuvers to the plus signs, but nowhere else. That's interesting. Wouldn't you always, then? It doesn't seem like it takes any extra... Hmm. It doesn't seem like it takes any extra time. But even if we were to run, like, uh, let's say 16 and 7 is 23. If we wanted to run 23 thrust, we're looking at... 20-something fuel... Plus the nine it's going to take to get down here. We don't need to produce that much fuel. Okay. Yeah. We need to produce some, for sure, but not that much. And uh, there is kind of a... There's a little bit of fuzziness here. Because we don't know exactly what our expenditures are going to look like. Alright, well. It's weird that it doesn't automatically stack. All right, everybody's out of actions. No, Peregrine back on the other planet is ready to produce stuff. So. TCW. We need to be producing titanium and carbon. Let's just produce a bunch of titanium for the moment. That'll be this turn. All right, back over to the other world. We need to go back with enough carbon dioxide. So our CO2 harvester... Sorry, don't do that. Our CO2 harvester needs to get worked. I'm sure we will need at least eight, right? We're going to need the silica necessary to produce an alloy. And that's just one, one, one. Okay, I do need to produce one more iron here as well. That's an action for this turn. So that'll produce this. That'll produce the alloy. And the iron and the alloy for this. She might have enough stuff, honestly. Peregrine, Peregrine might be pretty set. And so we need to bring him back. All right, we need to bring back how much silica? Just the one. And then it's water and fuel from there. Yeah, one silica and a bunch of water and fuel. Or actually, I even, I even built a fuel producer here. So we can just bring back a load of raw water. And we also have raw water. But we want to produce as much stasis as possible, right? It'd be really cool if we didn't have to set up this whole um, situation next time. So I think I'm going to go ahead and spend the rest of Peregrine's turns just turning water into fuel for the moment. So we're bringing back silica and let's grab let's grab a bunch of water with people's actions on this planet. Um, one silica. Let me grab that. That's got to go in the hold. We're going to move this whole thing of water. You could produce your own fuel. So actually, we could take your fuel because you have the ability to produce water and fuel. You don't need to have any fuel left over here at all. This is probably enough water. 
We honestly have no idea. And then we need a bunch of carbon dioxide. So what I'm going to do here is I think we'll leave this to fuel. We'll generate a full stack of water and carbon. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So that'll be another another couple of turns. Put that there so that we have this. And of course, they're doing very loud lawn work outside. My apologies. They wait until I start recording. They are watching me very closely. And Peregrine... We're bringing back stacks of water. We're bringing back a stack of water at the very least. I don't know that Peregrine desperately needs to be doing anything. I mean, like, increasing these ships' titanium stock is probably worthwhile. We got some time here. All right, let's jump back over. So we need one more carbon... And I'm bringing back another stack of water as well. Okay. All right. I'm going to bring the other silica just in case. It's not like it costs us anything. Uh, so I guess it doesn't really matter who's staying here. But Brighteneth was the original pilot of the Nexus 83, you know. Okay. Okay. So, do we want to just grab a bunch more silica in case unforeseen? I mean, we can at least turn it into alloy, right? And then we could head back. Ah, let's let's fill the slot up. Let's. There's no reason to go with empty empty tanks. All right, and then while that's happening, Peregrine is going to just produce a bunch more titanium, I guess. We should probably produce some iron as well, but titanium seems valuable. All right, so this will be the turn that we have people leaving uh, leaving this planet with the with the stuff in the ship. Okay, so. We need four more actions on this thing. Sorry, the silica. And then you need some actions left to actually pilot. And you are the planet laborer now. The air cater is leaving. And we're doing this in the fuel-efficient way because it doesn't seem like there's a reason not to. I mean, I guess each maneuver is an action. But you have a maximum distance you can travel in any case. Yeah, I don't know. All right, landing maneuver is always tricky. So back here with your three actions, we are just producing fuel. Uh, we're going to harvest some water. We are going to turn the water into fuel. All right, and with all of these resources now in the bank, we can Produce an alloy, then construct this, and start pumping stasis out. And yes, it is indeed one of each thing. So, if stasis stacks to to nine in a slot, we can we can produce quite a lot here.
Okay, what do we run out of? The titanium. That, yep, that makes sense. Uh, let's... Alright, so that is a stack of stasis. What are we going to need to get home? Fuel-wise. Because what we're basically trying to do is just fill this ship with a combination of titanium, alloys, stasis, and fuel such that we can get home. Since we seem to have plenty of time, we can afford to take the short jumps. So, an E10 jump, followed by an E2 jump, followed by an E2 jump, each of which are like single fuel jumps, right? Yeah. So we can hop, hop, and then at the end, we're going to have to make a night a nine energy jump all at once. So that's five. So we could, in theory, do this for nine, 10, 11, uh, 16. We could do this for two stacks of fuel. That's getting home. Then the question becomes, do we want to do any more exploration here? Because we do have some time. And like, what if I wanted to make this scriptorium thing happen? If we filled this ship entirely with fuel. You know? It's pretty gentle. It's a pretty gentle ride. The hard part would be like there's a there's a 15 energy move here, which requires six fuel. Yeah, if we filled um ah we can't fill the ship entirely with fuel, we would have to have the building materials for a scriptorium, right? What does that take? Oh, it takes two elixir. So you would have to go home first in any case. But we have that stuff on the boat, right? We have, yeah, we have alloy and elixir. So, okay, yeah. Nexus 83 is just producing a complete, a completely full hold of fuel. That's how we're gonna manage this. We're gonna return to the ship with a ton of fuel And the, uh, and we can make a second run while all of this stuff is happening on the other planet. We have plenty of time. 20 turns is plenty of time. Okay, so we're going to need to produce a bunch more titanium here. We're going to need nine more titanium. And then that should be enough to let us do... Nine more stasis. All right, and there we have another full rest. We have enough fuel for the journey already. So we should just make... Should I make a trip back to the other planet? Well, we should definitely produce more titanium either way. But I'm, I'm wondering how greedy we can get here. We're sort of packing our, um, packing our stuff to the gills. All right, so you're going to... Two, two, two. All right. Make water. Make fuel. You can make fuel really quickly. Back over here, let's just produce, let's spend this turn producing a stack of titanium. All right, we need to take the produce fuel action two more times, which means taking the produce water action one more time. 
we'll just leave some fuel behind on the planet for the others. Yeah, and then we'll uh, we'll zoom back. 17 turns should be more than enough time to do this. And this is a fully functional fuel station for the other ship. Is it time to go use it? I mean, it's also a functional station for other stuff, obviously. Um, hmm. Like if we put the stasis back, we don't need to carry the stasis out now. Oh, it won't let me sort it. It, it automatically fills the first... X slots. That's probably a fine way for that to happen, but it is antithetical to the way I want it to happen. Like, am I going to try to return to the ship with 36 stasis? Is that where we're at? We can produce a bunch more alloy. Alloy is useful, and we don't have a ton of it on the ship. Let's, let's produce a bunch more alloy. Prep for the trials and tribulations ahead. Okay, so we're out of silica now. You may as well just produce the titanium, because we're going to need more titanium. And Brynath... can make these really efficient little jumps. Because again, we do have a huge amount of time. We produced 4.6 fuel. Yeah, wow, we produced 4.6 energy off of the first point of fuel. So there's no reason not to make it a jump, a four energy jump. Here, we can't do that. So we have to make the 9 all at once, and it's it's 9 versus 11. Does that actually change things very much? Well, it's a single fuel, but we would spend that fuel shorting it anyway, so we may as well just make it back all at once. Okay, so you're out of movement. Travel time is a thing. Okay. So we're going to need to produce a whole bunch more titanium. Somebody's going to stay here and produce titanium. While everybody else... Okay, let's have one of you produce a bunch of titanium. You're just going to ride along. There's no need for the traveler to have actions left. You're going to also produce titanium. And Somnia is going to fly the ship. difference between 10 and 12 is a little bit more meaningful for a ship of this size. And I think we can afford to be efficient. I have two actions left. Yeah, we may as well just let's start this maneuver. And then is that... That's just two fuel. So yeah, we'd be doing two one fuel jumps, sir. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we can end your turn there. Everybody's out of actions. Okay. So. Oops, don't do that. Sorry, I was trying to select Brynath. Here we go. All right. We need to bring two alloys. That's not how I meant to do that. Okay, you can double right click to pick stuff up like that. Okay, so the question is, can I make it there and back in 18? And I think the answer is yes. All right, the first maneuver would have to be here. Uh, so no, I can't make it there and back in 18. Shoot. The ship is too small for the mission. Well, we 
We don't have to make a 19 energy jump all at once. If I stop off here, right? We could stop off, grab some fuel, make the seven. Yeah, I guess that's what we're going to have to do. It's awkward. It's awkward with the, with the tiny little cargo bay. This is a really interesting resource design. All right, so we'll make that move. And y'all have some stuff to do. You gotta gather silica. And also water. I guess, okay, hold on. We are, we only really need one silica. Like we'll go with nine alloy. Yeah, so we need water and titanium and carbon and a silica. That's a little bit of a shame because you know, one silica and nine silica are the same amount in the cargo hold, but it is what it is. I could have calculated this better earlier and saved us, saved us some effort. So yeah, let's grab one silica. And then a bunch of water and carbon. And we're gonna need more fuel as well, but you know. It's actually better for us to carry water because each water becomes three fuel, right? It's better for us to carry back raw water because there's a fuel converter on the other side. We want just enough fuel to get back to the planet which is what, two plus one plus 10 energy. So it's exactly one stack. Okay. And Celesta, while they're doing that, you need to be producing, well, a titanium, but then things get a little murkier. There's no reason not to just produce a bunch of extra titanium, right? We, we're, we may end up leaving some of it behind. It's possible. So one silica. As much water and carbon as we can carry. But we kind of want to be careful about the uh, the degree, right? The the split. So it's going to be enough water. We want water and carbon in proportion for the stasis plus additional water for fuel. So we could do we could do two full stacks of water and carbon that we intend to turn into stasis, and then just bring back two more full stacks of water or even even another stack of silica and really stack really stock up on the alloy it'll be something like that and i don't think there's any reason for celesta to do anything other than produce titanium until people get back and then the ship is uh the ship is still moving okay braneth has one action left so From here to there is 14 energy, which for this ship is five fuel. And then it would be like one and three. That's a two fuel jump, right? No, that's a one fuel jump. And then there's an 11 fuel jump on the other, an 11 energy jump on the other side of it. So that's four. So we are going to need five more fuel than it takes to execute this maneuver. So it's five to get down here, five more to reach the planet. And then ideally we need to go five and five back up. So the ship would have to be carrying 
in the low 20s of fuel. The ship would have to be carrying three stacks of fuel. Or we need to scrounge some iron and build a build a way station somewhere. I mean it can be on the planet's surface. There's water on the planet's surface. If we just if we just grab the iron to build a water plant and a fuel converter, that'll do it. Okay, there's nothing here. It's just this is a place where we could build stuff. We're just, where this is just atmosphere. So that's what these represent. Oh, there's a place where you could like build a thing in orbit. Uh, sun's looking a mite gloomy. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing how the timer can matter. It, it definitely can matter. All right, so I need you to get to here. Clear maneuver. This is basically free. Taking it to 14. It's expensive, and then we refuel on the surface. We need to, gra we need to grab two iron. And I'm kind of thinking maybe we need to be in a little bit of a hurry. Yeah. All right. Uh, Celesta. What does it cost to build two iron plus an iron and a titanium? That's super annoying. <laughs> Have to devote an extra slot. Um, I like we simply can't do that, right? No, in fact, there's no way for this to work. Because we have to carry the elixirs and the alloys. Okay. Alright. So what you have done is you have brought this stuff for the other ship to use. Yeah. I think that's true. Uh, we're gonna need... I'm gonna try to do it all here. Maybe this is maybe this is too expensive. So we're gonna need two iron plus an iron and a titanium. So let me produce one more iron. And then, you know, we're gonna... This is gonna be some titanium. <clears throat> okay. Other planet. Uh, we could have Bryneth just ferry back some of the completed value. Because apparently we're going to have to change things up a little. Twelve turns. It's going to take three turns to get back from the deepest planet. It's going to take us one turn to get to the deepest planet. Plus whatever turns we spend maneuvering. I think we have time to finish the plan. I think. We gotta produce a lot of carbon here. Are we staying to produce another stack? It would be most of people's actions for the next two turns. And then it's probably like a turn of flight back to the planet. Then two turns of flight. I mean, maybe. We might be able to do it, but let's not risk it, I think is where I'm at. Produce me some more water. Yeah, let's just, let's just take what we got here and go. Your navigator. You get in the uh, in the rumble seat, and all right. So we want to do these maneuvers in a fuel efficient but also time efficient manner. 
Okay, that's three fuel. It would be three fuel either way. This move is just gonna, it's gonna eat the six fuel, it's gonna eat, that's just the nature of things. All right, let's get down here and figure this out. So we have some actions left. This ship is going to take on the materials needed. Like this, we had to go back and get the elixir anyway because I had not prepped the elixir, right? Somebody's going to produce that last bit of alloy. That's happening. Then we're going to turn a bunch of water into fuel. We're going to produce a bunch of stasis. This is important. The stasis is really important. Uh, oh, let me put the carbon dioxide in the planet store. And also, Brynath, get down here and produce stasis. Okay. So now, three more. What did I run out of? Oh, water. I didn't I didn't transfer all the water. Yeah. Okay. So three three things of stasis, one of which we are going to consume basically immediately, but that's fine. Now we're gonna take with us. So this ship is going to need, for construction, a titanium. And I, there's no reason not to take, a, take all the titanium. Wasn't it three iron? Water harvesters, two. Fuel producers, one. Yes. So we're going to additionally need an iron. Okay. And then... Well, I guess, you know, we can skip that stuff. If we just bring a stack of water, we don't need to build the water place at all. And so we can... I still have to bring iron, though. Just trying to figure out what we want to what we want to actually have. So we're going to need fuel. I'm going to bring a stack of water which will turn into 27 fuel, which is enough, right? It's definitely enough. If we're talking about making a, this, this final leap, which doesn't all have to be made at once, but if we did want to make it all at once, we're looking at uh, 19, 19 energy from this ship, which is a lot. But we can produce 27 energy on the planet's surface. Or we produce 27 fuel on the planet's surface. I think we're going to be okay. Sorry, I know I'm being like very slow about all this. But I'm so nervous I'm going to screw things up right here at the end. Uh, so the Nexus 83 is going to carry back all of the stasis probably. Right? You can make that, you can make that trip in nine. Can't you? You get to here for like free-ish. And then you have to make a nine a nine energy jump, which costs three fuel. Yeah, so you can make that happen. And we have time to do it the slow way. So that's gonna be I don't know. I don't know who's doing that. Brynath. That can be Brynath's vibe from now. Uh there we go. Sorry, get you out of there. You're the navigator. And I'm just going to go ahead and enter that maneuver. Start entering the maneuvers now. Uh, so we want to make... I know navigator has no actions, but can I... I can't, I can't even enter it. Well, whatever. Okay, we'll worry about it next turn. Somnia and y'all need to produce some more fuel, for sure. We're also... We're carrying the extra stack of alloys. We have to bring titanium. Or we have to bring the iron necessary to mine titanium. There is titanium on the surface. One. So... 
Yeah, if we bring two iron, we can mine the titanium there. And then we can just... We can just bring water to turn into fuel. Okay, one thing that we know for sure that we want to do here, at the very least, is fill up that stack of fuel. And then... I guess we could we could devote ourselves to carrying a stack of titanium as well but i think maybe the smart thing to do is just produce one more stack of fuel for safety does it the, i guess the question is does it take me 18 or 27 fuel to get there because i'd rather carry an extra stack of water if we can get there on 18 so it's like we make we make the the 10 energy jump that's going to eat 6 fuel right away then we can go two more fuel gets us to here so that's 8 then we have to make a 14 energy jump which is another 10 so that's 18 fuel right there from that point it's easy enough to get but we do we do have to carry a third stack of fuel basically is the is the thing we have figured Okay, so let's make that happen. Operate. You get down here and operate that as well. And then I think we can just leave. I think we're um I think we're good to go. There's no reason not to bring all the iron. And if we're bringing a third iron, that lets us... Oh, don't even let me see the costs, huh? Bringing a fourth iron would let me produce a water harvester down there in case I miscalculated. Like, like this is safety iron and it only costs us one extra action. It's probably, it's probably worth doing. All right, let's see if we can manage it. <clears throat> so, this jump first. Then, this jump is one fuel, or that jump is two fuel, right? Yeah, so we just make it all at once. Now, we have time to do this the slow way. Uh, meanwhile, you also have time to go slow. This is a single fuel for this ship, which is fantastic. And then you are headed home. <clears throat> headed home with all the stasis we will need for quite some time. While the other exiles make a somewhat dangerous gambit. <laughs> okay. So... Four is two fuel. We may as well make the, the move all at once. And then this is 11. Who, which we have. Little narrow there. Okay. So we can start setting off a little bit here. Also, stuff in the cache is nice. Um, they're just being titanium on the ground is actually really helpful. So we're going to set up a fuel producer over here in the corner. All right, I have to put my iron in the cache here. Okay. Whew, all right. So, a scriptorium. Alloys and elixirs. The chronicle requires four entries, and here's one. The pyramid on the horizon stood over the mountain ranges, never disturbed by cloud or rain. The approaching terrain being so treacherous, a year passed before the colonists could reach it. As the distance closed, all they all could agree it was aware of their presence. 
All right, and then we need to produce ourselves a lot of fuel. Everybody has four actions all of a sudden. Is the Scriptorium giving a bonus action? Hmm. Okay. Um, so this titanium's at depth one. Here's a question. Do we want to put together a stack of titanium before we leave? Also, let's go to, let's go to Bryneth here and make sure things are unloaded. Bryneth, get home. Put all this stuff in the reserves. Okay, I guess it just lives here always. Ooh, we have a Caracal engine that I did not notice. It's sort of a midway... interesting. Um, or at least we have the ability to build them. Okay, so the question now, yeah, do we... What would it cost to get set up? It's an extra iron. But I think we can afford it. And then we could set up the titanium and we could fill the ship's hold with titanium. Because I think we're going we're gonna to be able to get back on 33 fuel. I'm fairly sure. If we can't get back on 33 fuel, we can certainly at least make it back to our other fuel depot. So filling the ship's hold with titanium, yeah, it's not so bad, right? We do have to be, you know, a little careful about time. Six turns. But with everybody having four actions, this really doesn't take all that long. And we weren't going to bring the iron back anyway. Alright, so next turn we leave. Let's hope this wasn't foolish. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. So, 11 consumes that. Make the four jump all at once. And then it is a matter of... So this move, 19 energy. What would that cost us? We could just go. It would take three turns. That's totally fine. We could do it in a slightly more fuel efficient way though, right? And we have the time to do it this way. If we do a 14 and then an eight and then a three. Is that more efficient? The eight will cost us five. Uh, no, it actually doesn't end up being all that. It, yeah, it's not meaningfully different really. Okay, let's just let's just head all the way back in one then. We do in fact have the fuel for it. And the gloom creeps ever closer, but you know we did some important stuff here. And on the final turn, we arrived with alloys and titanium and even the tiniest bit of fuel remaining. Oh, please give me a sort button. Please let me. S oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, engines go at the end. So do resources. This is going to drive me a little bit crazy. Okay, there we go. That's a, 
I can live with it being sorted that way. <clears throat> Alright, everybody back on board the ship, please. And I think we're good to just hit the hibernate button, right? You have enough stasis to hibernate everybody. All your exiles are present. People are going to lose some faith. That's, you know, it's understandable. We got to figure out what we're going to do about Elixir. That is a next time kind of problem. Again, once more into dim starlight. Okay, they make you they make you confirm them because stasis is a valuable resource. Uh, wait, cost what? How do I how do I even click these? Are these Hey game manual help None of these are clickable as far as I can tell Location grid constructing and operating buildings artifacts that's fun Uh During hibernation you may spend knowledge to purchase abilities for your exiles We don't have any knowledge that's why I can't click anything Okay. That's a thing that we should try to learn. Knowledge. Frequently in the game, a complex move into multiple steps must be calculated before starting the first maneuver. That is certainly the case. And it's just telling you, like, how to figure out the stuff that we were just doing. Okay, so we need to acquire knowledge somehow. Artifacts are gathered from planets and other locations which provide knowledge when returned to the vault. So we need... Artifacts. Each location has one kind of artifact to be found. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. This is super useful. I am very, very happy that we have a, uh, a comprehensive appendix here that tells us all the stuff. Yeah, that's really, really nice. So, okay. We can't do any of this. We don't have any knowledge. And we have arrived at the star. Von Ruhlmott. Hibernation is slow and usually painful. Stasis keeps the body alive, but does not alleviate the pain. It is a blessing that we can sleep through the process. And let's begin. And yeah, immediately we are seeing this is a more complicated system with hazards. And that was the tutorial. Welcome to, th welcome to the real shit. Yeah, there's lots of hazards everywhere, including just on the travel. Um. M? What is M again? M is methane. We don't even know what you would need methane for. But it seems like maybe you're only getting it from gas worlds. It's very uncommon. And the fact that it's very uncommon probably means we need to go get some. All right. Lots to do, much to consider. I think this, however, is where we need to call it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, tomorrow, roughly, maybe, we'll see. Honestly, I'm pretty into this. There might be another one tonight. We'll see. Um, we are going to take on this far more complicated and dangerous looking system. And I'm going to try my level best not to get all of our crew murdered in my greed. I give it about 50-50. And we'll see you then.